Okay, hi. So uh, my name's Adam. I work for Woodland Ways, Bushcraft and Survival, and uh, we're here at the Wilderness Gathering in Wiltshire, which is an annual event for us and uh, an annual show. So this year, amongst other things, we are trying to engage people with bone work. One of the things, one of many things that you can make from that, which has great functional value, is a needle. So we've been running a workshop this morning, taking uh, people through that process. So starting with the raw material, and uh, we've actually been working with deer bone. So this is fallow deer, and it's the, the lower leg. And um, essentially this piece has just had the ends removed and then uh, we go through a process of reduction. Okay, so how you would go about doing this, if you wanted to make a, a bone needle, first thing is you need a, a source of bone. A few things that you might consider is just going for a walk in the woodland and, and trying your luck. You may find bone. Something to know about bone found out in the wilds, out in the woods, is that um, you need to find it in the right condition. So it's gonna, the animal's going to have died and then that bone's gonna be degrading over time. So you, it's a bit hit and miss as to what kind of quality you can come up with. Another way you can do it is if uh, you save bone as an offcut. So say from a meal, the lower leg is no meat on it to speak of. So you have a meal, you save the lower leg uncooked, and then you have a source of what we call green bone. And actually for a needle, that's exactly what we want to use. It's the, uh, the raw bone, fresh out of the animal, is still full of oils, it's still very, very flexible. Um, it has some durability to it. First step is to remove the skin. So we have here the, the lower um, leg bone of the deer. This is very um, durable, tough material, but we will skin that off the lower leg to expose the bone and also the sinew, which is attached on top. And you can actually see a channel running down this bone here where the sinew would have been uh, attached. So we can make the needle, we've got the material, and then we also have the thread. We can process this into a, a string, a thread to sew with. Um, so the idea is we're gonna utilize these channels to score along and then break the bone into blanks. But that's still quite broad. There'd be a lot of uh, reduction still to do here, a lot of material to remove. So ideally what we want to do is split that down again until we're left with a much narrower blank. And you can see each time we're getting closer to the proportions of what you might think about a needle uh, having. Okay, so from a uh, primitive point of view, what our um, forebears, what our ancestors would have had as a toolkit, um, certainly nothing like what we've been uh, working with people today, but the idea is that the techniques are still very similar. So where our ancestors would have been using uh, stones of various grits, various coarseness to abrade, well, we can make up these much lighter, much easier to use surfaces, but they still have the same techniques of uh, being able to abrade that bone. The abrasive um, surface, we start just by placing the bone on. And you can see quite clearly how effective that is, taking the, uh, the bone away, and that's knocked off a corner. So initially it's just about rounding out the blank. Then as you approach the, um, you know, more the dimensions of what you're after, you can slow that down by turning the board over, and that's where we have the smoother grit to just kind of neaten things up uh, and tidy up those last few edges. Last tool, we need something to create the hole. So what we have is a, a file, and this is very simply used just by pushing in. It's got a triangular profile. So as I push in and twist, this will actually start to cut into the, the bone itself. So with perseverance, eventually you will go through the bone, and that's how we create the, the hole at this end. Okay, so with time you eventually get to something that resembles a needle, becomes recognisable as a needle and um, always it's good to think uh, really from the beginning what, what application is this going to have? Is it just going to be uh, ceremonial, kind of ornamental or are you actually going to use it? And I hope the answer would be is that you're going to use it and therefore understand more about the, um, the material. But the hole at the top end is um, 
uh, really quite interesting when we look at archaeological ones is it can actually give us a some insight into maybe the fibres that they were using to sew with, to stitch with, um, but also the size of the needle itself. You know, um, big robust needles, things like this, are clearly not going to be for um, small skins. That's going to be for something much thicker, more durable, a harder material to get through. Uh, so it has that strength. Whereas again, uh, we do find much, much more delicate uh, narrow needles like this one. This was actually a, a fish bone and um, a, a rib of a, a, a large fish uh, but that by comparison has a much smaller eye in the top there now actually the detail if you can see initially the eye broke uh, and we had to re-drill uh, a, a hole below that one um, but other bones as well i mean we've been working with straight bones but of course you can work with different shaped bones so ribs from mammals all have a, an inbuilt curve as they go round the the rib cage there and that again can have quite a useful um, design as you're pushing through the material for it to resurface on the other side so to help you achieve different stitches uh, i hope that's been useful come and see us and uh, yeah we can uh, at woodland ways we can show you some stuff about bone working and um, yeah i hope that's been useful